we'll try to keep up with these as much as I can here. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing tonight. We'll let, we'll give people a couple of minutes to come in, but thanks so much. This is my first time ever doing a live stream. So it's pretty nuts to think that we're finally here. So just thanks to everybody who's popping in. If I keep looking down, it's because I'm monitoring the chat on my computer. So I, I'll look up at the phone when I can, but you know, it's what we're working here, working with here. Why is the channel named RBP? All right, we'll get to that. So we got a couple of things we're gonna do tonight. We got some train chat to do. I'm glad to answer questions, assuming I can keep up with them. And also we have a big announcement that we'll talk about tonight and there's gonna be more on that next week. So it's gonna be a lot of fun here. So hey Charles, Union Pacific 4014, train guy Kenny. Hi RBP, can you run any Long Island? Well, first off, thank you for the super chat. I do not have any Long Island. I'll have to have RJ come up for that because RJ's got the Long Island stuff. I need to get some Long Island. I really like the Long Island color schemes. Favorite diesel locomotive. Oh, that's a hard one. I think it's an SD40-2. I have two of them running, but they're stuck in the tunnel because I had a train crash at the beginning of this whole thing. Lots of people still coming in. All right. Here we go. So tonight, what I want to chat about, let's talk a little bit about what's going on out in the industry. Got a lot of stuff going on, a lot that's been being talked about here. Uh, we got a recap of my trip to Concord back in December. We're going to have a video that's going to be coming out on Eric's Trains channel about that. But I'm going to see if I can answer questions as we go. This chat is like flying by, guys. So like I'm trying to, trying to keep up. David Kohler says, what? No Hiawatha? I'll tell you, the trains that are running tonight are running because I tallied up all the comments. So if you follow my community page, I had like maybe 200 comments on the trains to run tonight. So what I did was I built an Excel spreadsheet. I, I, I swear I did. I sat down last night and I tallied up all of the trains that everybody wanted me to run. And then I, I voted. So basically what we had were the number one and number two. Can you guess what they were? I bet you can guess what they were. I'll wait and see if anybody knows what the top requested trains were. He says, I bet it's not the big boy. It was. It was the big boy in the 844. So as you can see, oh, Mr. Train, please run NS4000. Oh, I should sure run NS4000. Thoughts on the new bright light trains? Well, there's all kinds of stuff coming in. All right, I'll talk about those in just a second. So we have the, the 4014 and the 844 are double-headed. So they're pulling these Vision Line reefer cars and some MTH cars that I have. I took the sound cars off tonight because they make a lot of noise. And I needed to be able to talk and try to hear myself think. And then we also have the 765 Burke running on the inside line and the Dreyfus Hudson. Had a lot of requests for the Dreyfus Hudson. So that was pretty interesting. I was curious as to what folks were going to want to see since we just did big steam, but I couldn't take the 4014 off the track, so I left it on there. And it is the Lionel version. So let's see. We also have, what else is running today? Well, I have this plated Santa Fe that's sitting next to me. I'll get that going again soon. I have a diesel lash up that has a couple of MTH diesel engines, which are a lot of fun to run. And then I have somewhere in my tunnel are my two SD42s. So they're sitting there as well. And then I have the 611 running on the inner line tonight, which we'll switch out. And I have a vision line daylight that's coming around the turn in just a second. So yeah, some of the yeah, Vermont rail fans says, of course he has the Hudson. Yes, of course the Hudson. Man, I wish that this chat would go slower so I could like say hi to everybody. Oh, here we go. Question from Trainsmania 2022. Do you think Lionel should make an NW 442 Atlantic? I mean, I think anything that you all can think up should be made, right? Will it get made? You never know, right? It's, it's, up to, it's up to how many they get. A lot of people saying happy birthday to the Flying Scotsman. You know, I did a video a couple weeks ago and I was told that I need to add the Flying Scotsman, so I will look for that. GE Steeple Cab, thank you. Really nice Weaver Brass GG1 on trains for 300 bucks. Hmm. You all should check that out. Train Guy Kenny, Mr. Train 611 is his best friend. Fantastic. Look at that. Friends in the chat. It's like a big party in the chat tonight. Oh, someone's saying to find a 1218. Yeah, I don't have a Class A. 
at Union Pacific. We have David H., Tom, Seth, Crab God. You know, as a, uh, as a Baltimore guy, we love crabs here. Train Boy 4014, Roman. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Life with Roscoe, good to see you. James Landers, Train Wild. Garrett, good to see you. Someone says, can I run the 21010 I actually just ran the 21010 in my last video. So I did pop it off the layout for tonight. But if you want to see that one run, check out my last video because it does run in that. And you'll get way better shots of it there than you will tonight. Although I will at some point maybe move into the center of the layout. I don't have a Richard Kuhn. Uh, Daniel Ramirez says, RBP, do you have a Richard Kuhn era Chessy Steam Special? I do not. I have an MPC era Chessy Steam Special. They got a couple of other things going on here. Favorite part of the layout. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because what we're going to look at tonight is some of the things that we've done. You know, for those of you who've been following me for a little while, at the end of the summer last year, I decided to do a big layout modification. And that modification is wrapping up. We got a lot of stuff done. I've been up late kind of working on ballasting and some of those other things. And what I have is the north end and the south end of the layout have been completely rebuilt, essentially, right? So you have this upper area with these bridges, and it's all connected with, of course, that eight-foot Steubenville bridge. And then I have, at the back of the layout, I finished doing some mountain scenes. And we're going to do like a formal layout update video. I thought about doing that this week, and I decided to do this live stream instead. Do I have Thomas the Train? I do have Thomas the Train, but he's actually at my nephew's house right now. Uh, he's been running over there for a little while. It's kind of fun. The Daylight Show. I'm a YouTuber too. Awesome. I'll check out your channel. Tyler Sage. Any news about the Strasburg 90? I do not have any insider news, which is unfortunate. I, I am in contact with Lionel all the time, but they know I have a really big mouth, so I, <laughs> they don't tell me anything. <laughs> I, I will tell you I, what I think. I think they have it. Um, I don't know what's going on with it there, but if they have it and they're hanging on to it, that's probably good news for all of us that are getting one. Uh, my opinion on TMCC locomotive, NWR Production says, what's your opinion on TMCC locomotives? I am a huge runner of and fan of TMCC locomotives. A lot of my trains that are here that I've had for a while or even some that I've added, like for example, the Hiawatha is a TMCC and just a great engine. I mean, a TMCC, I, as long as they're going to, as long as they run, and I mean, they're, they're excellent. Yvette says, I love the daylight. Me too. Me too. RBP, can you run the Shea? The Shea will not run tonight, but we'll run the Shea in a video soon, I promise. The Shea got a lot of votes, to be honest. Black Bonnet's just chilling in the yard. Good eye, yes. The Black Bonnet is ready to go in a little while. We'll get that going. Let's see. Boss Mike, I'm a YouTuber for five years. Nice. Am I planning to get a K4? I could use a scale K4. I have, I have a baby K4 somewhere, semi-scale. Oh, my favorite, Central San Benicio Waste Management says, what's my favorite train car? It is a Union, Union Texas Petroleum. Massive car. We got one a long time ago before I really like was following the train scene and I thought, it was, thought that was hilarious. Someone says, where's the Katie? The Katie's back there. If you were in the stream at the very beginning, I, I came right out of the gate with a train crash, which is just awesome, you know. Let's see. Favorite post-war engine is the 773. Someone asked the favorite post-war engine. So a lot going on. Let's see. Any intention to get the number 999, the Empire State Express? Maybe. That's a cool one. The MTH version of that is phenomenal. I have the... Uh, the the Royal Blue, which is similar, right? But not, it's not uh, New York Central. Mr. Train 611, thank you again. Thank you again. RBP, I'm a YouTuber too, and we got, we got a call with pals. Yes, we do. Do I like HO? MJ Trains. Of course I like HO. I like all scales. I think all scales are really cool. When I go to train shows, especially ones that have lots of different scales, it's always fun to go look and see all the different types. And I, I won't lie, when you look at an HO train or an N-Gage train, and you can do so much in the space, I mean, that stuff is so impressive. 
I'm not much of a of a like proper model railroader. I'm kind of eclectic, you know, stream of consciousness type. But uh, it's really fun when I see those really detailed uh, layouts. Doctor Death, how many Strasburg passenger cars is Lionel going to make? I don't know how many they're going to make total. I got all the ones that they made in the last run, so we'll have those when my Strasburg 90 engines come in. Oh no, I'm losing the chat. It keeps pumping forward on me. If I'm missing your question, I'm sorry. I'm, the chat is like going nuts on me here. Where's the Blue Goose? The Blue Goose is up on the shelf tonight because it is a conventional engine. So I got mostly command engines running tonight with the hopes that they were gonna behave. But as you can see, I set the speed wrong at the beginning. What locomotive am I still hunting for? Well, I would eventually like to own a pre-war 700E, so we'll say that that's the one I'm hunting for. Also a triplex, but there's a rumor that Lionel's gonna make a triplex. So I am hanging tight, just in case they do that. <laughs> Lionel, oh, some random guy says, what is a purchase that I regret? You know, I don't think I've ever regretted a single train that I've bought. Oh, we got another David O'Kelly. Good day, RBP. Layout's coming along. Thank you. I will maybe be at York in April if I go. It might be Friday. Uh, wow, you're going to be there for a while, a week and a half. Yeah, who all's going to York? Let me know if you're going to be there in April. They do, for those of you who don't know what the York show is, it's a show in Pennsylvania at the York Fairgrounds, and it is a great time. It's mainly O-gauge stuff, but, you know, if you're a train lover, it's, it's a win-win. Oh, good. A lot of people coming. Oh, good. The lag here with my chat's not terrible. Sunday is... Okay, happy birthday to Noah Scott. Sunday's his birthday. Sunday is also the day before my daughter's birthday. Fantastic. All right. Where is the Ace of Everdeen, Carolina, Western? So, funny thing. Again, going back to all the requests I got. I had about 200 comments, and I feel like most of them were different, uh, different trains. I think you all requested just about every train I own. Oh, GE Steeple Cab, thank you so much. Could we see a cab forward and a triplex together? Sure, if I get them. I have to get them first. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say that as I was looking at all the trains, I wish I could run every train that was requested, but that would be pretty much the whole collection that I have, and there's, it's going to it's gonna be a tough one to try to pull that off. Although I am working on a video where we're going to show and run every single engine. We'll do like a 10 to 15 second clip of every engine running. But it's been staggering to pull that together. Let's see. And I have some more questions coming in. Hairspray or mousse in my hair? Neither. Gel. And do you know, I decide to cut my hair when my hair touches the top of the screen. So I'm due. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to make fun of my hair. That's all right. I make it easy on you all. All right, let's see. We have, where's the hot dog? The hot dog is in the yard. I just ran the hot dog in my last video. So the hot dog is not on the, not in the stream tonight, but we'll run it again soon. A lot of folks asking for Norfolk Southern. So obviously Norfolk Southern, I always say to check out Jason, my good buddy J.D. Stucks, because he is the Norfolk Southern guy. More Norfolk Southern engines in that collection than I've, than I've seen. Joe Robb, thank you. Love your videos, RBPA. Thank you for that. American Trains 47, welcome to the stream. PRR 4800, have you ever been with Strasburg? I've been to Strasburg, so I'll, and I'll be going there again this summer. I really like going up there. It's only about a two and a half hour drive from me or so. Let's see, we have Western Maryland Trains. You know, I really hope that Lionel makes a replica of the 1309. I think that that's something that's gonna happen. So if you've been up to Cumberland, if you've had a chance to go to the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad, I think that's going to get made. And it's going to be really cool. 400-some folks on the stream. Thank you all for taking time on your Friday night to join. The Base Boost King. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. What was my best purchase? Oh, geez. You know, I think my best purchase were the... The 763, which is my pre-war Hudson, and my 773. And I, the reason I say that is because I found them together. I happened to walk into my local shop, and they were both there at the same time. 
Sammy, thank you so much uh, for the super chat. Just want to say that you've been watching for over a year now. Thanks for your support, man. Or uh, thank you for your support. Really appreciate that. NWR, would you ever build a ceiling layout? Well, a ceiling layout would be a lot of fun. It'd be fun to build that somewhere. I don't know where. We've taken up too much space already, I think, with this room. <laughs> Eddie Whiteside, new subscriber. Thanks. Welcome, welcome. All right. Doublehead both big boys. You know, I would love to doublehead both big boys, but the problem with that is that one is a Lionel and the other is an MTH. So putting them together, I don't think they would run properly. Uh, the speed controls and MTH and the speed controls and Lionel, just different enough that I don't think that that would work really well. Uh, RBP, did you get to the Maryland show in Timonium? I did not get a chance to go down this time. It's been kind of some, some hectic weekends going on lately. <laughs> What's my least, least favorite engine? <laughs> Sean Hoff. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> oh, good to see you here. Thank you, thank you. 765 coming around. Yep, there it goes. So again, if you're just joining the stream, let's talk about what's on the layout again. So I have the big boy and the 844 double-headed in the front. Those were the most requested trains for the live stream. And then the Dreyfus Hudson and the Daylight were right after them. So I put the Dreyfus Hudson on. I got the Daylight on tonight. We have the 765 Berkshires running around. And then on the main table, I have some other stuff, which is sitting at the moment. I'll get that running again here in, in just a second. <laughs> Someone says, I don't want to get personal, but what does your wife think about your co train collection? She's super supportive. She's actually watching the stream upstairs right now, which is kind of funny. I love it. How many engines do I have that run? Well, all of them run. I don't have any that don't work. I don't know how many I have, though. There's, there's a few. There's a few down here. Why is the channel named RBP? All right, I get this question a lot, so here we go. When I started this channel back in February of 2021, I had been thinking about it for several months, and I was planning a, a couple of different things. And I was looking at a lot of the train channels that were out there, and I originally wanted to call my channel Chris Trains, which would have been simple. But when I typed in Chris Trains into YouTube, there were a ton of Chris Trains channels already. And it's funny because one of the other Chris Trains was Chris's Trains and Things. And at the time, I was like, oh, man, this guy's got it cornered. And now he's one of my good friends. So going back to when I was a kid, my brother and I, we've always been into video making. And we would make these, like, cheesy videos. And we called ourselves Rains Brothers Productions. And that stood for RBP. So we would have RBP films and we, we have like our, it was like our thing we did. And then in college, we did more stuff with that and called ourselves RBP. I had a DJ company for a while. So my brother says to me, Chris, if you're going to start a YouTube channel, call it RBP Trains. Done. So that's what it actually stands for. My brother is silently involved sometimes, helps with some of the production stuff here and there. But uh, that's what RBP means. So if You've been wondering, now you know. Can I run my Santa Fe war bonnets? Yeah, they should get going, shouldn't they? I don't know if anything's attached to them at the moment. Let me get my Union Pacific engine going. I got my DCS remote here. So to get these moving forward. Good. And I'm gonna get my Santa Fe moving. Hopefully it's not hooked up to my other train back there. It doesn't seem to be, okay. I'm gonna move my Union Pacific engines a little bit further. So we're gonna have the main table rolling now. So hang on, I'm gonna be off the chat for just a second while I uh, make sure things are behaving. Any of you that run trains, I know a lot of you, a lot of you are with me. Also a big thank you to Sid tonight for monitoring my chat. Sid from Sid's Trains, I think you all know who he is. And if you've ever had anything break, chances are that Sid knows how to fix it. So again, thank you, buddy, for being on the chat tonight. And I will check that Dreyfus in just a second. All right, so now we have things moving again on this table. I'll back off that Dreyfus Hudson. That's what you get for running too many trains on the stream, too. Shame on me. 
the Dreyfus is actually a Proto too. So if you know your MTH, right, there's different levels of their control systems throughout the year. We're still on the Proto Sound 3 variation and generation of technology. But that Dreyfus that's catching up to my Proto 3 Berkshire is actually a Proto 2. And we'll let it, uh, let it pace out here a little bit. Okay. So hopefully everything behaves now that we've got some distance between the trains here. I'm just making sure they come through the tunnel. If you look way back in the back, that's where I'm looking right now. Like this is the stuff I normally do off camera, like when we're doing videos. <laughs> okay, someone asked, let's see, Chris, where do you get your trains? Because he wants to make his own layout or they want to, I want to make my own layout. I keep saying this. Um, I get trains from a couple of different places. So my online go-to stores would be trains.com and train world but I've ordered stuff from Mr. Muffin's trains. It just sort of depends on who has what and when they have it. And I do have a couple of local shops here in the Maryland area that I go to. So lots of places I get trains from, lots of options. So if you like to collect used trains and you're looking for some good prices, but you don't necessarily want to go to eBay, that's where I would definitely recommend trains.com because they got a lot of cool stuff. And then Train World is where I get a lot of my new stuff and I pre-order a lot from there. All right, so here we go. You can never have too many trains running. Yes, Glenn, I agree. As long as, as, long as I don't crash anything else, right? <laughs> have I ever broke one of my engines? I have not broken an engine. I've definitely had engines that have needed maintenance, but it's typically your normal stuff. Traction tire blowouts. I did have a board fry in a third rail engine once. Funny story about that. If you've ever seen the video on my channel that says the most fragile engine on my layout. It's about my brass Yellowstone. I got that engine used and I, I don't buy a lot of trains used, but that was one of the first ones I did. And it showed up and I put it on the track and the board was just dead. So I called Sid, cause Sid doesn't live too far from me. He's about an hour or so away. And he ended up coming to my house that night at like 10 o'clock at night, repaired the board, got the engine running, and I made the video. So if you've ever seen that video, I, I literally did that in like a night. So it was just kind of funny that he, he was able to do that. So if you know someone who can fix, it's great. Andy Gaming, RBP Trains. Are you planning to get any Aussie trains? I don't know if they make any of that in O-Gage. If you find something like that, feel free to drop me a comment or hit me up on Instagram about that. That would be great. Welcome if you're just joining the stream. This is my first time live streaming, so I'm glad we're all in this together. You know, it's just like a fun Friday night of me saying random things, answering some questions, and running a couple of trains, trying not to crash again. Will I ever do a video about switching my trains? That would be interesting. I could try that. We got enough switches to do something like that. Ah, oh, the ghost train. I would love to make a ghost train. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. That was asked by Train Nerd 97 all right, Trains Mania, Ricardo says, do you think it would be good to have a Williams by Bachman 460 modified? I don't know, that's pretty specific. I don't even know what the BTTF 131 is. So a lot of folks asking for different trains for me to add. I'm always looking for train ideas, and I have to tell you that I appreciate all the ideas because a lot of trains that I haven't even thought of before, I'll read in the comments and then end up adding them. So really cool stuff. Uh, Mr. Cassie, can you give my husband Edward a shout out? Edward, thanks for joining the stream tonight. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate that. Am I going to go live every Friday? I wish. I don't think I can go live every Friday. We'll see how this goes, though. Well, I get a Grand Trunk Western. I need some Grand Trunk stuff. I, I really enjoy Hobo Shoestrings videos. One day I want to, like, bring him into the train room and, like, have him do a video with me. And he talked about Grand Trunk at one point, and then I was like thinking I need to get some Grand Trunk engines. So maybe, maybe I will. Ozark Midland and Southern Railway. So Bill B, are you ready? Do you see my coffee cup tonight? If you have ever watched Bill B's channel, he's the Ozark Midland and Southern Railroad. He's building a layout. He's been featured in train magazines before. Just a good friend of mine. So Bill, I'm glad to see you here. I hope that you, uh, hope you see my coffee cup. 
Quick train check. Everything looking good? If you see something about to crash behind me, let me know. Because you all know me. Once I get babbling, I, I stop paying attention. Lion Chief Dash 8. I would gladly review a Lion Chief Dash 8. Lion Chief engines are awesome. It's funny, my, my nephew likes to fall asleep to trains running. Um, it's like his sound machine, and they'll run for hours, these Lion Chief engines. Train Guy Kenny has a YouTube channel. Check out Train Guy Kenny's YouTube channel. Absolutely. Good to see you, Train Guy Kenny. Thanks for joining. Can you give my son Cam a shout out? Yes, Cam. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining the stream and watching the, uh, watching the, watching the trains. All right, so a couple of things going on. I think we can probably, we're about a half hour into the stream, so I want to make a big announcement. And if you saw my community page, you may know what I'm about to talk about. We are going to have an RBP Trains custom run engine. So if you are watching and you have a browser handy, you can go to trainworld.com, and if you go to the search and you type in RBP, you're going to see something there. It hasn't been formally announced. It's going to be announced next week, maybe Tuesday night. We'll do a, a launch stream for that. But if you take a look, you'll see what it's all about. Obviously, it's going to be a blend of this channel and a little bit of heritage. It was something that I really wanted to do, and the Train World team was really awesome and instrumental in pulling that together with us. So if you take a look, you'll see on the Train World website, search up RBP and you will see a custom engine. And it is there. Oh, yep, there it goes. Sid, Sid just linked it. Rabbit Hole Railroad, how you doing? Good to see ya. What is my dream train? The 700E pre-war by Lionel. That was the first scale Hudson ever made. It is one of the most collectible trains that is out there. And I would really like to have one. All right, we have a couple of other things. We got Caroline Perrin. Thank you for joining. Yep, so if you've looked it up, that is the uh, RBP Custom ES44. So it is a legacy engine. I really wanted to do a Lion Chief engine because of pricing, but the way that these custom runs work, it's kind of complicated. And I'm going to do an, a video where I explain the choice and why we picked that one and everything else. So we'll, we'll go through all of that and it'll all hopefully make a little bit more sense. Train check, train check. Look at that Dreyfus catching up again. This time I'm just gonna make the Burke go faster because we like fast trains. Right, we're just gonna crank this bad boy up. Let's go. So we're gonna add a little bit of a gap here between my Dreyfus and my Berkshire so it doesn't crash. Boss Mike, when is the next RBP and Friends? Well, Boss Mike, thank you for joining first off. And the next RBP and Friends will probably be later this summer. We'll do another one where I take video submissions. So get your layouts ready, get your videos ready, and I will give instructions on how we're going to do that. That was one of my favorite videos I did last year. It was just neat to meet everybody. There's the Katie, in case you're waiting for that to come by. 4014, Mayday, Mayday. Are we going to crash? Hopefully not. Let me get my legacy remote out. <laughs> Train Wild sees it. Train Wild says, the Katie. <laughs> yes. I'm going to go ahead and get my daylight moving a little faster to add some gap here. Good. All these speed controllers. If you all run multiple trains, you know the pain of all of this. Right? There we go. And I think we're back to it. All right. We got some gap there. Allegheny City Productions, please do a Lion Chief engine. I hope to. I hope to. I really would love to do a Lion Chief engine. So I'll just, I'll spill the beans on, on why it works the way it works. So when you do a custom run engine, there's a minimum order threshold. And the legacy engines, you only need to have 40 of them made for the engine to run. On Lion Chief, you have to get, you have to get ahead of it several months in advance, almost like before the catalog comes out. And there has to be a minimum run of 100 engines. So when you think about how much capital a company has to put up to put that out, 100 engines is, is quite a bit. So we're going to see how we do with this legacy engine. If it does well, we're going to definitely try to do this again. 
Uh, there's also going to be some rolling stock later this year, so a lot of announcements around that. But I really would love to do something that is, you know, more on the affordable side with Lion Chief. I think it would be great to put something out there that just sort of, you know, makes the funnel wider and lets, makes it more accessible. Oh, here's a good question. Jody Smith, do you think the price of the Big Boy Superset is a sign of the way prices are going to be? How can Lionel keep justifying? Yeah, I think the price discussion has been on the top of a lot of people's mind. And it's one of those things, I know economists, you know, I don't, I, I'm probably the last person you want to ask about that kind of stuff. But we're, I think we're going to keep seeing, as we see prices rise, even not in, outside of trains, you look at automobiles, you look at basic commodities, you know, I think it, it was only a nat it was natural that we were going to see this. It's just unfortunate that prices are where they are because when we're collecting trains, it's already expensive enough as it is to be in this hobby. But I know production costs and other things come into play. So it's, it's been an interesting time. I don't really, like I said, have a good grasp or read on how that all works, but I know there's definitely overhead costs with Lionel. They have a big staff. I was there, like I said, in December, Eric Siegel and I went down, and Eric's pulling a video together, and it was fascinating to see the operation. And I will tell you that there's so much that goes into making these trains that we don't even think about. I was looking at all of the research and development that goes into how the motors in the front and the back communicate with each other and how, how they adjust themselves based on what the train is pulling, how they, how they adjust speed based on if they're going up or down grades. It was really cool to see how that all came together from a technology perspective. But then looking at the logistics, how they pull all the, all the gear in, how they, how they do all their repairs, and they still offer those, you know, those free warranty repairs there. Nicholas Bly, hey, thank you. I own the rare 260 SpongeBob set. Yes, the 260, I don't have that SpongeBob set. That's a cool one. Maybe one day we'll get that SpongeBob set. Kyle Herbert, where am I at? Kyle Herbert says, yes, I'll gladly give you a shout out. Can we have a race, Thomas versus Percy? We'll have to try that. I'll have to get those, those engines over here. That'd be fun to do. I really hope nothing flies off the shelf, though. Uh, Dylan Rupert says, what did I order out of the Lionel catalog? Well, I ordered the Dreyfus Hudson and those passenger cars, and I ordered the North Pole Central Sleigh Bell Limited with those passenger cars. That's all I pre-ordered, and then I'll get other things as they show up. But those are the sets I wanted to lock in for sure. My dad is a collector. If you've been watching my channel, you know that my dad also collects O-Gage trains. So he got a couple of things like the uh, Century Green New York Centrals and some of those. All right, so we have, oh yes, yeah, Zach Wheeler. Thank you, Zach Wheeler. I, Eight-year-old me can't believe it. 37-year-old me can't believe it. What number track will your custom-made engine run on? It should run on a... 54 diameter curve, I would imagine. It's the, it'll follow the same criteria as the other ES44s. The bridge looks a lot like the one that crosses the Ohio River between West Virginia and Steubenville, and it is, yes. The bridge on my layout is a replica of the Steubenville Railroad Bridge. So, uh, Mr. Train 611, if you see me at York, <laughs> we will definitely have to catch up at York if you're there. Oh yeah, I love classic rock. Classic rock is great. I think I listen to just about everything. You just never know. Chase the Video Game Slayer. Chris, do you think the, that Lionel will make a Vision Line or Legacy Eerie Triplex? Yes. I, I truly believe that's in the works. I can neither confirm or deny, but I think it's in the works. And if you are not aware of how the Vision Line works with Lionel, every other year, there goes the Katie again, Every other year, Lionel makes a new Vision Line engine. So you'll have a year where they have research and development, they, re, they rebuild molds, they build a brand new engine, and then we'll go a year where they will remake a very sought after engine. So that's why we have the big boys that are being run this year. And last year, uh, we had the Vision Line Class A, right? So the Class A, the big boys. So when we get to January of 2024, or York, this fall York, we're gonna get the announcement for whatever that new Vision Line is gonna be. Uh, I won't be at Allentown this weekend. It's one of my daughter's birthdays this weekend. Oh, we have a shout out, and I really hope I say your name right, for the uh, Debye's family. Yes, thank you for joining. Katie, Katie, Katie. Yes, Rail Chief 74. 
Uh, what are my thoughts on the I Love Toy Trains MTH freight set? Well, that's a natural. I, I have to get that set eventually, but that one doesn't pop up as often as some of the others. Apple and Orange Line, good to see you. Do I have a T1? No, I don't have a T1. I have an S1, but not a T1. I think every time I do these, these streams or these videos, I figure out what I don't know. You all teach me so much. You have no idea. You have no idea. All right, I'm trying to get back here to the... Do I have any pets? I have a cat. I had to kick the cat out of here earlier because uh, the cat will keep trying to jump on me while I'm doing this live stream. <laughs> Train Table Railroad, do I still have the Lionel Legacy Southern, the 13, nine, yes. Oh, you're talking about the Southern Crescent? Yes, I, yes, we have that one. It's, uh, it's on the shelf right now. The 611, yeah, I can get the 611 going. Someone asked if I can get the 611 running. It is on the track, it's sitting there. Train check, how we looking? I gotta speed up my Santa Fe getting caught. Mr. Train plays four guitars. I, I'm a drummer. I used to play drums all the time. This room, believe it or not, used to be a music room uh, before, before I had kids. And now it is a train room. All right, so going back to my trains here. Everybody's running okay. Everything's behaving. Okay, good. Emotional anime, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. What train model made you the most excited when I held it in the palm of my hands? Oh, wow. You know what? I think it might have been when I first got the Allegheny. That was my first articulated steam engine. And I remember taking that train out of the box and I was like terrified. I didn't, I never handled a articulated engine, an articulated engine like that. I didn't know if I was going to break it. I didn't know if I was handling it properly. I think that that was the one that uh, would stand out if I was thinking about it. Obviously, I didn't hold that in the palm of my hand, so to speak, but uh, I did have it. Flying Yankee. I do not have that engine. Peter Sam Studios. Absolutely. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Frankie, what is my favorite regional railroad? Favorite regional railroad? Well, being a Maryland guy, I like the Maryland Midland. It's neat because I can check it out. It's a still runs. I think the uh, it's been taken over by the how do you say it the the Genesee or the Genesee, but every now and then you'll see a Maryland Midland freight car or something like that. So it's pretty cool. I like that at least. What was the very 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 first model train I acquired? Well, the very, very first one, if we were talking about O-Gage, was a Baltimore and Ohio semi-scale K4 Pacific. It's on a shelf up that way. That was the first one. I, in my Q&A, that was my, I think I ran into my Q&A. So that was one that I got before any of the others that I have. What are my thoughts on On 30 trains? On 30 is like a whole other level. I look at those layouts and it's hard to, it's hard to discern between what's model and what's real. <laughs> Fascinating. If you are one of those folks that can do that, my hat's off to you. Not that I ever wear hats because my hair, I guess, wouldn't let me. Nicholas Bly was a percussionist in a marching band. Oh, and I, I can use your I Love Toy Train set. Oh, cool. Well, I'll have to figure that out. That'd be a lot of fun. Any plans to go, dry, to go operate the 1309? Maybe. If I can do that, I gotta get up to Cumberland and do that. That'd be a lot of fun. Can I explain the history about the Crayola hopper car? Well, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that the one thing I, I am not good at is taking this hobby seriously, right? I like to, I like it all. I was at York and it was last fall and I was at the Grzboski's train booth. And it was really interesting when I walked in their booth and there was the, there was the Crayola hopper like sitting on the shelf. So. I just, I had to, I had to get it. The Rambles, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, the Rambles. So if you know Tony, he does some really great videos. He's going to be running trains tomorrow with the North Penn O-Gagers at the Allentown Show. Definitely go by and introduce yourself to Tony. He's a great guy. Absolutely. But yeah, getting back to that Crayola car, the Crayola car came with a set of crayons that I think are probably going to be worth more than the car. So I didn't open the crayons. The crayons that are in the car, I 
just got a pack of crayons from Walmart and put them in there. MFP Trains, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Out West Trains, did I order the new hot dog? I did not. I did not order that one. Doesn't mean that I won't get that one, but I still, I'm still waiting for these, these two Strasburg 90s that I ordered to come in. That's like, I'm like so excited about those trains. You have no idea. Do I have any tips for a newcomer that's coming into model trains? I get asked this question a lot. And my only, my only tip for you is just to explore, experience, and do things your way. And what I mean by that is very simple. I was able to just kind of assemble things and try different things on my own. I would wire things up. Sometimes I would do it right. Sometimes I would do it wrong. And that is the biggest piece of advice that I could possibly give someone is just to try and just to try it out. There's definitely a lot of great sources online that you can look at, guides, manuals. And if you ever get stuck, there's always people to help you. But sometimes you just have to wire things up backwards and let things spark and then, you know, kind of go from there. Emotional anime, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm glad to hear that you're back in the hobby. I think that model trains are something that you can, you can go as deep as you want to. You know, if you're into the history of it, what a great place to be because a lot of folks know a lot about the equipment and about the different road names. If you're really into scenery, it's artistic. You have all this, all this design potential. All, you know, you can do as much as you want. And then obviously the technology. You have folks that like to run conventional trains, folks that like to run vintage trains. You have the command trains. There's just, there's nothing you can't do in this hobby. And I think it just teaches so many skills along the way. Like I actually did some electrical work in my house not too long ago because of model trains. I, was, I had the confidence to go try it myself. All right, I saw another question in here. I'm trying to catch back up. Where did I get my clock? I got it from my my brother's mother-in-law, she was just getting rid of some stuff and she had that clock. And I was like, uh, I'll take the clock. I have a spot for it. <laughs> Let's see, will I get the GS 4410 MPC engine? Uh, maybe. I have a GS MPC engine, it's a daylight. It's a 4449. Uh, can anyone go to York? Do you have to be a member? York does have a I think on Fridays and Saturdays, you can just pay and get in. Uh, there's a bunch of different halls that you can experience. So the main hall is the orange hall. That's where a lot of the big vendors are. That's where a lot of the manufacturers hang out. If you want to go look at more of the, the used stuff that are like more like the consignment items or things that people bring from their own homes, I think you have to be a member or get in with a member to see that stuff. But someone may be able to, to answer. Uh, Dr. Death says, says the Willy Wonka train set is really nice. I just watched that movie the other night, and I'm like, yes, we will add the Willy Wonka set, 100%. Gus Hadley, good to see you, man. Looks like I've rebuilt my railroad. I have, yes. I started back in October, started the demolition in October, and I have been working on it ever since. Yeah, usually I'm sitting, like, in the middle of it, so this is the, the overall view of the layout. Do I think the Lionel will make the Mercury? Noah Thomas asks, will, do I think Lionel will make the Mercury for the New York Central? I don't know. That would be a really neat engine. They made the Dreyfus, so they're catching up, right, to some of these New York Central engines. New York Central, of course, is my, my favorite main railroad, Fallen Flag. Parker, hello, RBP. I like cheeseburgers, do you? Of course. Preferably a bacon cheeseburger. I could use a cheeseburger right now. Do I like the Santa Fe Railroad? I like, do like the Santa Fe Railroad, 100% on that. But I think of the, what do I think of the Russian decapods with the swinging bell? I think the swinging bell feature is, is a little bit underrated for what it is because it may not seem significant, but when you're running a train, especially if you're running it at like an event, an open house, or if you're part of a club, if you ever watch folks walk up to the train who may not even be into trains and they see that level of detail, they see that bell swinging, they will call that out. They will call that out. Someone just says, why isn't 611 starting up? I'm so sorry to leave you hanging. Sorry. My bad, my bad. All right, we're gonna move. There it goes. 
for the person who was asking for the 611, it is now moving. Okay, it's gonna take it a while to come around. All right, so going back to the chat here. Oh gosh, I'm missing all kinds of things. I'd like to turn my head for one second. <laughs> it's trains, says, yeah, seeing a lot of people wanting to see the J run. Sorry, it's running now. Two rail or three rail? This is a three rail layout. The more realistic of the two. I'm kidding, totally kidding, totally kidding. What are my favorite whistles? I don't know. I like all the whistles. The whistles are all kind of cool. Uh, the dimensions of my top loop is, let's call it, it's definitely about 27 feet long and roughly 10 feet wide, so to speak. Would I ever consider getting the vintage Lionel Crayola train set to run? I actually have that set. And I need to do a video. I want to customize it, like just like paint on it. It's being held as like a day two type of thing. Pizza Gamer likes pizza. I like pizza too. Pizza's great. Opinion on Wawa. Uh, I like Wawa. It's a great convenience store and good food. Zeus VR, thanks for joining. The Daylight Show. Can you look at my channel? Yeah, I'd be happy to go check your channel out, Daylight Show. Do you run the daylight on the daylight show? Life with Roscoe says, I'd love to see Lionel make, make the Dreyfus. I'm not sure what that, oh, American Flyer Dreyfus. Yes, that would be great. That would absolutely be great. Have I heard of the Tweetsie Railroad? I've heard of the Tweetsie Railroad. Do they make Tweetsie Railroad for O-Gage? I've actually had that question many a time. The gold standard asks, any other hobbies I have this amount of passion for? I got a lot of hobbies. I like to do RC cars, but I don't do videos on that. That's just more of me having fun and wrecking stuff in the backyard. All that kind of stuff. Hot wings or nachos? Oh, you put me on the spot. It depends on what the nachos have. Like chicken nachos? Love those. No, oh, making me hungry. Oh, GE Steeple Cab. More trolleys and interurbans. You know... The only trolley I have is the trippy trolley. I probably owe you some more trolleys, don't I? Can I run the Army Veranda Turbine? We'll run that in an upcoming video. That engine is a bear to put on the layout, but uh, we could definitely do that. How many trains do I have, including rolling stock? I don't know. I have 120 engines or so, give or take. I don't know exactly how many. There's, there's a few in here. Of various, various vintage, and some of them are new, some of them are old. I love all of it. Will I make a ceiling train? Uh, probably not, but it would be fun. It would be fun to make a ceiling train. Menards. What are my thoughts on Menards? I think Menards is brilliant for making train stuff. So if you are into any type of trains, Menards has all kinds of cool stuff that they make. I almost thought about uh, doing... The Menards rocket, rocket uh, train car with the, with the Lionel rocket set. But I'm like, I just can't. I can't get that. All right. So, yes, the 611 is going to be coming through here in a second. What I think we'll do in a moment is I'll move into the middle of the layout so that you can see it a little bit better. GRR's trains. Can we get a collab with Sid's trains? Yeah, back at Christmas time, we did a Polar Express collab. He made a really cool engine. Check that out. The Lion Chief Dock Sider. We will definitely get the Dock Sider out eventually again. Do I have a lot of brass locomotives? Not many, not many. I only really have the, the two Weaver brass engines and then I have the Yellowstone by third rail. Look behind me. Something gonna crash? You gotta let me know. Think we're good? There goes the J, passing through the town of Addison. That's the north end of the layout. So what trains are you all looking at getting this year? I would love to know. Did you order anything from Lionel? Did you order any of the new MTH stuff? MTH is making products left and right. If you follow their website or you're on their mailing list, it's mainly through dealers, but they have all kinds of cool stuff that they've been making this year. They got some Hudson's coming out. They have all kinds of good stuff coming out this year. So a lot of folks have asked if MTH is closed. Most of you who are watching tonight, there's 500 some people on here right now. 
Uh, I'm sure you're, if you're into O scale, you know that MTH is alive and well and making new stuff. And they have their new control systems coming out this year. There's all kinds of cool stuff that we're going to be talking about with MTH. I would actually really like to have the same relationship with MTH uh, that I have with Lionel, but MTH is a much smaller company and I've just, I haven't had much success in getting Rich Foster's attention. So if anybody's watching who knows him, tap him on the shoulder for me. I've tried, I've tried. He's just not interested in talking to me. I love, I love MTH stuff. Actually, most of the stuff on this layout tonight is MTH. What's my favorite terrain company? I don't actually have a favorite. You know, I, I really like collecting all of it. I have some Atlas stuff coming this year. And if you've ever talked to the Atlas team, they are some of the nicest people that you will ever meet. If it's a family company, they make a lot of the high-end scale stuff that looks modern. So if you're, if you're into modern collecting, go no further than, than Atlas. And then Lionel, obviously I got, a, I got a good relationship with Lionel. I really like the Lionel stuff. Um, I've had good success with Lionel. I know there's been some chatter about different things with Lionel lately with their QC, um, but I've had really good success here. I did get the observation car for Strasbourg with the backward toilet in it. I thought that was kind of funny. I'm actually going to leave it that way because I don't know how many people are having theirs fixed. And if 40 to 50 years from now, some collector's looking for an original, I will have one. So we'll see what happens. And obviously MTH is a, I'm a huge fan of MTH. I probably have the same amount of MTH stuff as I do Lionel stuff when it comes to the scale. Do I run trains for fun when I'm not doing YouTube? I do. And actually, if you're one of my post-war or MPC fans, I run a lot of post-war and MPC between videos because it's just no fuss. You know, I, well, I'll grab an F3 set and I'll put it on the layout and just run and just enjoy. Do I have the Hogwarts Express? I don't, but my brother does. I'm actually going to be doing a video on a little floor layout that we made. That's going to be coming up in the next couple weeks. An egg liner. Someone says get an egg liner. If you've ever seen one of those, those things are hilarious. I should get one. Uh, Easter's coming up. Patrick Downing. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for joining tonight. Greetings from Iowa. Sam Rossman says, have I tried to get Lionel's 1970s Mickey Mouse Express train set? So, my dad owns that set. I'll probably borrow it at some point and run it here, or maybe I'll do a video at his house. He has the full thing. Snow White car, Cinderella car, all that stuff. So that's uh, something we'll definitely have to run. That was a good find. He got that a couple of years ago, right before it sort of spiked in price. Sean's Train says, who is the next YouTuber I would like to do a video with? Well, I said earlier in the stream, I really want to see if I can track down Hobo Shoestring and do a video. Like, I want to put, like, a figurine in one of the cars and have Hobo Shoestring, like, in the car. I think that would be a lot of fun. Sorry, I got I to gotta add a gap here. Dreyfus is catching my nickel plate road again. Let's bomb it down the line. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything else is doing okay at the moment. Move that Santa Fe a little faster here. I'll get back to the chat in just a second, folks. Getting my trains spaced out again. Mayhem. Train mayhem. Okay. Does the bridge lift up? The bridge does not lift up. Unfortunately, here comes the 611 again. This time it's going the other direction because that inner line is a reversing loop. Uh, the, tr the bridge cannot lift up because it is eight feet long. And if I were to put it on hinges, it would be, I don't think it would even, even work. The guys who built it spent a lot of time explaining all of it to me about, you know, how it's supposed to be mounted. So I did everything based on their specs and it has been an absolute phenomenal piece. Can we have all the engines whistle and horns blare? Uh, I think we could do that before the end. I'll just have to turn everything on. Jeremy Bent says he prefers the DCS and Legacy handheld remotes. Oh, do I prefer the DCS Legacy handheld remotes versus the tablet? I do like, I like both. It's interesting. I'm kind of torn. I like the dedicated control that these offer. Um, lately, I've been having a little bit more 
enjoyment out of the MTH DCS app. If you've ever used that app, it's really powerful. And I like the way that I can build lashups with it. I like how I can type in the engine names much faster. So it's definitely been something that had to grow on me. It didn't necessarily grow on me when I first got it. When I first got it, I was thinking I might never use it. But lately, I've been using it a lot more. But I'm using my DCS remote tonight because my phone is doing the stream for us. <laughs> Peter, Peter Sam Studios, has your cat ever jumped on your layout? Uh, no, I'm, I'm one of the, the few whose cat hates the trains. When they run, the cat runs out of the room. Uh, I should get a Dash 8 for the layout. Uh, actually, I think that Santa Fe might be a Dash 8 that's in there. So, question here, any tips for starting a train YouTube channel? Yes, I'm still kind of figuring all this out on my own, but what I would suggest if you're going to do a YouTube train channel is that there's all kinds of things you can do with the videos, right? You could spend time running trains, you could spend time working on trains, you can spend time talking about trains. And I think what's, what's fun is when you can just blend it together and, and find a style that suits you. You know, if you want to be informative, you could really make a channel about how to do different things. And I would say that once you figure out how you want the channel to flow, you can always change things as you go. The biggest thing is to invest in lighting for the layout. When I did the classic toy trains article last year, what Roger Carp taught me was trains need lots of light to work. So I've got a bunch of lights that I got from B&H Photo and they, they light up my room because my room is naturally dark. If I was a proper layout builder, I would have done all kinds of lighting up and over it, but I just don't have that in here. We have, I had a cat that would get on my setup. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've seen a lot of folks that have cats that jump on the setup. Uh, Chris Arendt says, what is the pink train? Uh, the pink train that's sitting in the middle is by MTH. It is a Commodore Vanderbilt and it's honoring breast cancer. So it is a, it's a breast cancer awareness train. Um, just a really special, special piece. Have I seen the new Santa Fe Northerns? Oh, I have. I'm not planning on getting one because I have the Black Bonnet Northern. But yes, those are, those are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the question came in again, where do I order most of my trains? So if you're just joining the stream, uh, where have I gotten most of my trains? I buy a lot of trains from Train World, Trains.com, and I have some local shops that I go to. Do I own any cab forwards? No, I've had that question a couple times tonight. I don't have any cab forwards, at least not right now. Let's see, we got a couple of other things coming in. Oh, here we go. Someone got the Russian Decapod and they're waiting for the Erie Triplex. Yes, a lot of folks, the Triplex seems to be one of the most popular engines. And it, when it was made a couple of years ago, there was a lot of chatter about it, a lot of excitement. But lately, it's just been everywhere. I think just about every video I do, I get a comment asking when I'm going to get it. <laughs> RBP, can you run over the 9,000 class? <laughs> you know, it's funny. He was saying the other day, he's like, Chris, if you want to take that over to your house and run it, go for it. I just didn't feel like boxing it up. But that would be a no-brainer. No-brainer. Out of 10, Explosive Guy says, out of 10, how would I rate post-war? 10 out of 10. I am a big post-war fan. Someone says there's lag. Hopefully there's not terrible lag. Let me know if I'm back. Let me know if we're back in action. Looks like we're okay now. Lag is okay now. We got you. Thank you all very much. All right. I have to go on HG. I'm uh, out in the woods here. All right, good. Thank you all. Thank you all. Do I have a Discord? I do not have a Discord or a Patreon. I can barely keep up with my YouTube channel. But if you follow the Matt and Matt O-Scale podcast, I am part of their Discord server. So always happy to connect, connect there. Am I afraid a train could tumble off the layout? Uh, I think they'd be having to go pretty fast to fall off the layout. I haven't had anything go off the layout except for the, if you watch my Q&A video, that was a staged, <laughs> that was a staged accident where the train flew off. <laughs> so it was one of those things that, uh, 
I just did for fun. All right. What I'm thinking I want to do is move, maybe relocate into the middle of the layout and move a couple things around. We're going to operate some trains together in real time. Does that sound like a good idea? We'll get us another swig of coffee before I do this. Let's do this. All right. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to have to move you all with me. So bear with me. We're going to have to go under the bridge, which means things are going to get a little crazy for a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and pull you all off of here. Get my microphone. This is where things are going to go crazy. I hope not. Microphone is attached to my tripod. Okay. I'm going to flip you all around. So sorry about that for a second. We're going to come over this way. Are we lagging again? Or maybe somebody's uh, a little bit behind. All right. Make sure you're with me here. All right, we're going to go under. We're going under the bridge. Actually, here's what we're going to do. Let's go kind of slow. So this is... Thank you, Ethan Drew, for the super chat. Thank you. Uh, when's the video ending? We'll wrap up a little after 10 or so. This is the... Let's go under here. All right. Get everybody into the middle. getting another tripod set up. So if you're coming on here and you're you're wondering what's going on. All right. Almost back in here. I'm going to attach my microphone here so it doesn't fall. Everybody still with me? As we move into the middle. Can you say your intro? Welcome back, folks. <laughs> okay. I'm going to wipe off my, uh, my camera here. There we go. All right, so this should look more familiar. We're going to go ahead and get my chair back. Life with Roscoe, thank you very much. All right. And we are back. I'm going to kind of sit here in the spot. This is going to work fine. What mic do I use with my phone? Tonight I'm using a wireless mic by Rode. It's called the Wireless Go. I normally don't use a mic with my phone. I normally just use my phone. But because I was doing this stream, I needed something where you wouldn't hear everything. She forgot the internet train friends in the intro. I dropped the internet train friends a while back. It was one of those things that I kept getting made fun of for. So I'm like, you know what? Let's, uh, it's just me showing my millennial self, I guess. All right. Question for everybody. Chas C, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Question for everybody. What view would you like? Would you like me to keep the camera here? Do you want me to focus it on the bridge? Just let me know where you want me to, uh, to go. Someone says, can I see the train wall? So we have the train wall is over this way. Here's the bridge. So we're going to kind of do this. We'll see if we can kind of get it like this. Get a little bit of the layout, a little bit of that bridge. The bridge is hard to see all the way through because it's so long. Like, like if I was in the bridge, like, here's the bridge. Tour of the layout. I think we could probably, we could probably do the tour of the layout. Let me double check my train spacing here. I think we're good. Here, wait, here comes the Dreyfus. Coming across the layout. One of my, if not my favorite, scale engine. We are just moving this along. Frankie, 
why don't I activate the gates on my layout? Yes, I really should do that. I just need to put them and I need to get them wired up. There we go. All right, so we'll keep the, we'll kind of keep the camera here so you can see what's going on. It's probably gonna be okay like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab my remotes. You know what? All right, I'm getting a lot of, you wanna do a layout tour? Does that sound like a good plan? Put some smoke fluid in them. Yeah, I could turn all the smoke units on. I didn't have them on because I wanted to be able to see uh, what's going on. Layout tour, Memphis Railroad says yes. Do I love the, okay, yes, a lot of yes. Okay, we'll do a layout tour, let's do it, let's do it. All right, I'm gonna pick you all up again and we're gonna walk, or, you know what? We're gonna walk around the layout, let's do this. I'm gonna do my best to keep a steady hand, but I can't make any promises. Actually, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it a different way. This is like so weird to do this live, all this behind the scenes stuff that I normally get to hide. All right, we're gonna make my tripod higher. It's gonna be step one of this process here. All right, taking your way up. Rising up together here. Okay, now we have the ability to walk around. So this video, I'll do a formal video on all of this. How would I rate the Vision Line Big Boy? I love the Vision Line Big Boy. You all ready to get blinded? Here we go, we're gonna turn around. Look at all those lights. So many lights, sorry, we're turning around here. And I'm gonna bring you all down so you can actually see. All right, everybody seeing that okay? Hopefully you are. Hopefully we're all still here together. Jason Smith, how often do I clean my, or tidy my track, how often do I clean my track? I clean the track usually once a week because I run the trains so much. And I clean it with a, I clean it with a special type of cleaner and a microfiber cloth. But usually the microfiber cloth is hosed by the end of it. All right, here we go. Everybody able to see what we have going on here. We're gonna start at the, this is the south end of the layout. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. Obviously you'll see that there's a fireplace that's here and the fireplace is capped. It was capped when I moved in. So just getting that out of the way because I get a lot of questions about that. So what we have going on on the bottom here is this kind of mountainous scene. There used to just be like this, this mountain area with like a turnaround. I wanted to kind of build out the upper level so that we could get the trains to stretch out on that top area. Uh, you'll see I added a radio tower. It should say W. RBP, and I, I know it doesn't say WRBP because I just wanted it to say RBP. But if you are a radio broadcaster, I'm sorry that it is uh, technically not prototypical. You'll see that I have a tunnel down below where the trains are coming out. So they actually disappear and they roll around to this bottom area. And you'll notice that I kept my old mountain the same, right? And the, and the reason that I have the mountain that way is to remind me of where I've been and where I'm going. That was the first mountain that I ever really created on my own. So I didn't have sculpt mold. I didn't know, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff at the time. Sorry, I heard a weird noise behind me. I thought something was breaking. So I've kept that mountain the way it is as a reminder of, you know, what I've learned along the way. Oh, here goes Big Boy. Big Boy in the 844 and the Dreyfus right next to him. Gosh, that's great. Look at that, look at that timing. Who would have thought? The height difference between the levels, I think it's seven, seven or so inches, something like that. All right, so we go around here. Here's the Warren Trust Bridge. And you'll see the passenger station back behind. We're gonna pull the camera over this way a little bit some trains coming through over here that we'll see in a moment. All right, everybody's still with me, seeing all this. Oh, Old Ohio Angler, thank you for answering that question. All right, so you'll see that behind the passenger station, we have this, behind the bridge, we have this passenger station, and then we have the town of Bailey, which is this area of the layout. And this is where the layout used to end, this sort of peninsula area. With the new design, we have these bridges that now connect 
the two ends of the layout together. And we did that because I really wanted to have big trains running, a lot more big trains running. So that's what that allows me to do. Now, someone asked if I could make a waterfall. That would be kind of cool. Just trying to figure out where that would even go. Like I have space, but it's the layout's so narrow in most things. Uh, Tom says, your top loop is 089. Uh, the inside top loop is 089, and the outside top loop is 096. All right, but you have this area here. This is the Bailey Town, and then if we look over here, here's the yard area and my favorite scene, which is the Lego Town. Uh, what do I use for my roads? So I actually use the, the vinyl grass mats that Woodland Scenics makes, and I took a wet, like, uh, you know, drywall, putty spatula, scraped off the grass, and then painted the vinyl with asphalt top coat. And it worked, uh, worked pretty well. <laughs> JD Stucks, Jason, my friend, thank you for coming. It needs more Norfolk Southern. Well, I keep, I keep selling it to you. So I just, I'm not gonna have any Norfolk Southern by the end of this. So yeah, there's my Lego town right there. Those, those are Lego creator buildings. You can see where I'm not quite finished yet. Got some more painting to do. And we have, we have this yard area where we can park all of these engines and keep them staged and ready to go. Hey, TCP Productions, thanks for joining. GE Steeple Cab is gonna be doing a documentary tomorrow. Any tips? I would say just get lots of footage. You can always edit it together afterwards. Are you able to run two articulated engines on my upper loops? I can, I space them out so that we can do that. I'm glad you're asking these questions. These are good things I'll add in that, uh, that video I'm gonna be doing. Need more Canadian National. Yeah, I do. I only have the one uh, Canadian National. Would I buy a Mercury if Lionel ever made it? Sure, sure. This is the Addison area of the layout. This is the area that was redone. Noah Thomas, yep, I'll buy the Mercury if they, get, if they make one. So you see the bridge ends here and it goes over these bridges, which they are homemade girder bridges that my friend Lawrence made. Lawrence is awesome and he, he's like a woodworking genius. And the wood we used for this was from my, my late grandfather. Uh, who was a farmer, and he did all of his own wood milling and processing, and he had all these planks of walnut in his barn. And, you know, when, when he passed away and we moved my grandmother out, we were taking things out of the farm, and uh, we took that wood and gave it to Lawrence, my, my carpenter, and we were able to repurpose it for this layout. So that's a special memory of my, my grandfather. Uh, the Polar Acela will not run tonight. I would love to run the Acelas. The Acelas are great, but the problem with the Acelas is that they take a long time to put together. <laughs> so I'll have to do that. Uh, need some Pennsylvania and Conrail. Yeah, I don't have any... I had a Conrail Lion Master, but I actually got rid of that one. It was cool, though. I do have Pennsylvania. I have a Torpedo and I have the S1. He sees the computer in the chat, yes. So yeah, that's the upper part of the layout. We'll do this in more detail, like I said. We got some, some towns and things, but it's hard to kinda, kinda work all of that out right now. Let's get my tripod situated right here. What's running around the turn? I gotta go grab my remotes. Here goes the bridge again. So again, we are, if you're just joining the stream tonight, thanks for joining. This is like RBP behind the scenes. So sorry, it's not a typical video that's more polished and such, but we're having fun. Do a lot of chat and it's nice to talk to everybody for a change. Will I purchase any more Lionel Southern Legacy steam locomotives? Uh, sure, if they do that. Oh, uh, what's the Rainbow Canadian National car? That is a Grainer. Uh, and it was uh, my daughter, my daughter Claire saw that at a train show and she's like, Daddy, can we get this one? I was like, yeah, of course we can get this one. It's a beautiful car. Jimmy Seaver, got home from bowling with friends. I haven't bowled in forever. That'd be kind of fun to go do. Need more British trains. Yeah, the British trains are really cool. I don't, it's kind of a, uh, it's a whole different thing. Tony Matthews, what's my favorite train car? It is the Union Texas Petroleum train car. I actually don't own it, my dad has it, but I think it's hilarious because it's massive and uh, it's just super cool. 
Someone asked, what is the width and the length of my room? So the, the room is pretty much 12 feet wide, which is the length, the width of the layout. And then as far as how long it is, maybe 35 feet long or so, something like that. Uh, what are the smaller bridges? So if you're talking about the bridge, the, the Warren Trust Bridge and the Big Bridge are both by trainlayouts.com. So they are a custom manufacturer. They make all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, the smaller bridge that you see over there by the Lego town, where am I pointing? <laughs> that one is a custom built bridge that my carpenter Lawrence, my buddy Lawrence built. Uh, he used a CNC and did some cool things to make that bridge. Are my upper and lower loops interconnected? They are not connected and that is on purpose. Uh, I, since I've kind of gotten into YouTube, just about as much as I've gotten into trains themselves, I need a really reliable set of loops. And that's why those upper loops have no switches. They have no grades. Uh, the goal is to just make it as reliable as possible. Wow, Carson's been moving one and a half feet of snow for the last couple of days. I have not had any snow this year. Kyle Herbert, good to see you. Favorite Maryland brewery? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Chase the Video Game Slayer has the triplex. Excellent. What about the UPM? I don't have that engine. I do not. Can I run the George Bush Funeral Train 4141? That would be an interesting one to run. I don't run that engine a whole lot. I, I bought that set for its collector value, but I don't get it on the layout as much as I should. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to do that. Will I ever get my daughters down for a stream? I don't know. They, uh, the room gets loud when my daughters get in here, that's for sure. Uh, another question about a ceiling layout. So yeah, definitely would like to do a ceiling layout, but I don't think it's going to happen in here. There's some, some crazy stuff. What do I use to power the layout? Well, let's go look. Let's go check it out. Anybody want to see the power section of the layout? I guess we don't really look down at this too often. Ugh. Well, let's just keep it here and we'll kind of look down on it. All right, am I still coming in okay? Everybody still hearing me? Just like to make sure I'm coming in clear. Gary, thank you. It has been kind of relaxing doing this tonight. Hopefully I'm not jumping all over the place for you all. Okay, so here is the, the power section of the layout. So there are three Z4000 transformers that power the layout. Each handle goes to a different section of the layout. So to kind of explain how it works, it's hard in, to talk about it in theory, <laughs> but could, if you were to break this layout up, there are several loops. Everything kind of runs in a loop and they are separated by little blocks. Oh, Central New Jersey Railroad, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Um, as far as control systems go, you'll see that I have the Lionel Legacy. Oh, Bill B, thank you so much for that. <laughs> Danny, Danny Rains, that's my dad. He'll bring the Texas car over tomorrow. Thank you. Sounds great. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for watching the stream. On the control system side, we have the Lionel Legacy control system. We have the MTH DCS, and we have the Wi-Fi versions of both as backup. Um, and then I also have two MTH TIUs running in what's called a super TIU mode. And that's just to handle all the channels that we have. Because uh, when you break it all up, there is a lot going on. I'll actually kind of... Pennsylvania Railroad and NSFAN 287, absolutely. Thanks for joining. What are we going to do? I'm going to... Where's my mini RBP figure? Great. Let me flip the camera around. Just a second. Tap my... Whoa. That was a wild... A little bit of a Saving Private Ryan moment there with the jumping around. Okay. Here we are. We are back. X Cool Productions, thanks for joining. Can we show, can I show you the, the 4141? Sure. I can grab that engine. Let's uh, first let's get the mini me. This is mini me. So this little figurine, believe it or not, RTB, thanks for joining. This is a 3D printed version of me. I had myself scanned at a train show. So it's funny. I I went, I work in IT and I went to the big Microsoft Ignite conference 
uh, a while back. And they had like this kind of similar thing where you could get yourself scanned. And the line for that was literally out the door. Like you couldn't even get into the line. Max Mello 94, hey, thanks. Thanks for joining. Someone asked to see the Amtrak GG1. I, unfortunately, I can't run any of that stuff tonight because my, my layout's kind of clogged up uh, for conventional, but we'll do more conventional in the next one. But anyway, the Microsoft Ignite show, I went. Kyle Herbert, thanks for the super chat. I went to there, I went to the, went to there. I went to the show and you couldn't get the scan if you wanted to, but I went to a train show and they had someone scanning and a bit of a different audience. Nobody wanted to stand up in front of everyone and get scanned. So I jumped right into that line and I got this scan done. And then luckily enough, uh, the guy was super cool. Miniprints.com, check him out. And he sent me a bunch of these. And my dad actually painted this one because I am terrible at painting. I tried to paint one, it just looked terrible. So this one came out pretty good. He even added like my flippy hair with like some hot glue because obviously it's you know, out of control. But that is mini me. I have, a, I have a video of me getting, standing on this platform, like rotating around. So I'll uh, share that with you all eventually. So that was a lot of fun. That was kind of cool to do. All right, I really have to get my remotes. Ethan Drew says, can you show me the one? Which one are you talking about? What's the logo on my stool? Those are uh, Fender, Fender stools. <laughs> we, shrunk the RB, we shrunk RBB town to 148th scale. That would be a lot of fun to actually like, ride in the train. Uh, how do I get to the trains that are above the train layout? The ones up there, I get on a step stool and I actually have to lean in and um, there's also a hatch on the back that goes into my washroom that I can get in. All right, 40, 40, uh, can you run the 4014? 4014 is running. If you're looking for it, it is over there, double-headed with the 844, actually. Should be coming around here in a minute. What smoke fluid do I use? I use MTH Proto Smoke, and I use Lionel. Sometimes I mix them together. Those are the two I use. Um, I've used Mega Steam as well. What I found with Mega Steam, and let me know if this happens to you, it, it burns up real quick. Put Thomas the tank engine on the layout. I wish I could, Kyle. Uh, Thomas is with my nephew. Uh, t he's on a vacation at the moment. Uh, but what I was gonna say is that if you've ever used Mega Steam, it feels like it, it, it puffs really well, but it evaporates so much faster. The Proto Smoke is like a thicker oil or something. So it seems to, to last a little bit longer when I'm doing these videos. Have I thought about getting a Lionel Norfolk Southern First Responders? That'd be a cool one to add. I like those. Those are really neat. Uh, do I have trouble with the Pen CS1 derailing on 072? I do not anymore. Uh, what I realized, and if, you, if any of you own the Pennsylvania S1 from Lionel, on the back truck, the trailing truck, the washers, if you switch the washers, it will actually travel back and forth properly and it won't jump the tracks anymore. So that was a an easy fix, took about 10 minutes or so. Uh, J Rocks Railroad, you should get the Area 51 set. I actually have that set. That set is super cool. Like, I like how the alien takes over the train when you're, when you're riding and uh, when, you're, when you're operating it. What's coming around? We got the Burke coming around. We got the Santa Fe Plata coming in here. Let's do this. Do I have any pre-war? Yes, I have some pre-war trains. I actually ran a pre-war Hudson in my Christmas holiday video. JD Stux likely has the first responder set. I don't know, Jason, if you're on here, do you have that one? I don't know if he has that one. Uh, would I ever play train video games for a video? I, I've never done any train video games. Could be something else. Kyle Herbert, thank you again. Do I have the Pennsylvania Railroad T1? I do not have that one. I have an S1, but not the T1. Uh, will I get anything from Sunset Models? I actually ran in my latest video, which is running all my biggest steam engines, there was a Yellowstone by Sunset Models, third rail. And that is a cool engine. I took some really cool up close shots of it. Check that one out. All right, I think we need to, we need to blow some, some whistles and some horns. So let me get my remotes because I'm getting questions to do that. So let's totally do that. I'll be right back. For now, you can watch the trains run for a moment. And I'm going to power up my remotes here. And we're back. I'm going to start turning on some sound here. So 
Hopefully you'll be able to hear the sound okay because I have my, my wireless lav mic. We're gonna test with the daylight's whistle. Let me know if you can hear this. You can hear that? All right. That's a good one too. Oh, I had a super chat I just missed. Maximello, thank you. What's my worst train crash? Uh, worst train crash, I'll turn this down for a second. Worst train crash I ever had was when I was doing the MPC video. If you've seen my MPC video, I run a Southern Pacific Train Master, the Blue Comet, and a couple of other things. And that Southern Pacific Train Master came off the track and ran right into my 21010 Luckily, nothing happened, but it knocked the tender off the track. I was mortified. It was like one of those moments, and I didn't catch it on video, unfortunately. All right. We're going to listen to some whistles. Let's do the big boy whistle next. Paul Montagna, thank you. Big boy came in okay. Yeah, the big boy whistle is a good one. Lionel, Lionel sound sets are always good. I mean, so are MTHs. That whistle is the king of the layout. Pretty loud, train guy, yes. All right. <laughs> All right, so we'll back that one down. All right, turn this one down. We're going to go to some of the other engines that are running now. I do need to get my, my daylight is catching the big boy. 611 whistle. Sure, let's do that one next. It sounds good. Let me just get my, let me get some gap here between the big boy and the daylight. <laughs> oh, geez, that thing was really catching up. What else is catching up? Yeah, my Dreyfus is about to hit the other train too. All right. All right. Turn down that daylight again. All right. Man, we're going to go ahead and get my Dreyfus to back off. All right. You want to hear the 611 whistle next, so let's do that. I'm gonna get the sound up on that engine as soon as I move this Berkshire up forward. If you're just joining the stream or if you didn't get on at the very beginning, I literally started the stream with a train crash. Maximella, would I get subway sets? What are my thoughts on them? I would get a subway set just to own one because if you've ever seen one, the announcements on a subway set are really cool. Do I, do I have a B&O EM1? Yes, if you watch my latest video, it is in that video. You will not miss it. All right, 611 time. Let me find that engine here. It's like you gotta go through all of these, all of these things. All right, I'm gonna turn this up. Get a little juice on the transformer here. Steven, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. How does DCC work? That's a good question. I would need one of my HO friends to fill me in on that one. All right, we're gonna take a look at the 611, <clears throat> 611 real quick. And it's whistle time. Hope you can hear that. That is a good, good whistle. Can I park trains on the bridges? I can. So the bridge, 
This bridge that you're seeing right here is made of masonite, but these girders at the bottom are actually reinforced with aluminum. So you could park, I could have the, the veranda turbine on here. Up, oh, Sid, what's up? Oh, thank you. My two uh, Santa Fe's are gonna crash. <laughs> Robert Campbell, good to see you. Anthony Marino, how many trains do I have? First, thank you for the super chat. I think I have, I mean, something like 120 or so engines. Not 100% sure on that. Too many or not enough, depending on, depending on your preference here. All right, Santa Fe, we're gonna speed that one up. Get that one out of Dodge. How much of this stream has been me making sure my trains don't crash? To be honest, I was kind of expecting that. <laughs> if someone were to give me custom, H custom cars, would I run them in a video? That'd be kind of neat. Kind of neat to do. All right, then we have some gap now. I think we're good. Almost. 611 is still at Strasburg and will be for some time. Absolutely. I'm going to go see it again this summer. That was a lot of fun. All right, there we go. We're spaced back out again. Turn my daylight down. First, I looked around and I saw that 611 coming around and it freaked me out. I thought it was about to hit something. Can I run the 21010 So yeah, unfortunately tonight, I don't have the 21010 on the track. It is on the shelf tonight, uh, but I did just run it in my latest video. So if you want to see that one run, check out that video. Anyway, we can put some smoke fluid in the 4014. Well, we can, we can just get that one going, sure. Make sure we got the juice here. There we go. Give it a second to warm up and it should start pluming in a second. We'll take the camera over there. Census Sean, thank you so much for the super chat. Do I like the Texas Special? I do like the Texas Special, absolutely. I ever thought about setting up an airport on my train layout. Man, how cool would that be? That would be one fun detail. Actually, who was it? Ben from Ben's Trains. He does model airplanes. Should uh, totally try that. Can we get a tutorial on how to use the Legacy Remote? I should do it a I should do a video on that. That might be someone th something we can do one of these days. Favorite train movie would probably be that movie Unstoppable. That was pretty cool. That was a wild movie. I don't know if that would actually work out in the end though. Oh, here we go. You want to see? The, here's the smoke on the uh, the big boy. Sorry about my head, like right on the camera. All right, so we're coming around. So you can see smoke pluming out of those engines. You have the 844 and you have the Union Pacific 4014. So whoever requested the smoke, there you have it. Looks really cool when it runs under those, through those lights too, because then it really, you can really see it coming out. Oh yeah. Which locomotive in my collection produces the most smoke? You know, it's probably my Dreyfus Hudson, the Proto 2. That thing puts out a lot of smoke. A lot. Someone was saying something about the Lionel smoke units. The Lionel smoke units in the, in the newer Legacy chipsets I've noticed an improvement on smoke performance. I don't know if you all have noticed that, but if you have some of the newer Legacy sets, the smoke is definitely powerful in those. Um, at least that's been my observation. Owning different generations of them definitely seems to be something I've noticed. Dreyfus and Burke are about to crash. I was just noticing that. Thank you for calling that out though. So you all are, you all are helping me out tonight. We're, see, we're, we are totally running trains together here. Amazing, amazing. Titanic Dreaming. Can I run the George Bush Funeral Train? The George Bush Funeral Train will not run tonight, but I can eventually run it in a video. How does DCS work? Uh, DCS? 
It's actually a fairly intuitive system once you get all the parts. The key is getting the parts. Uh, you just need the TIU, which is your tracker interface unit. Look at it like a car amplifier. Your transformer is the, is the preamp, you know, or the, or the instrument. It runs through the, the TIU and the TIU runs to the track. And then you turn on your remote, it pairs to the TIU and you can add your engines. But we could definitely do a video on how that all works. Can we get a toot toot from the big boy? I actually just did a toot toot a minute ago. Here, I'll, I'll walk over to do the toot toot. <laughs> so there you go. There's the, uh, the toot toot on the big boy. What is my smallest train? It's probably the dock cider, which is uh, up here on this train shelf. So the dock cider is up on the top next to those, next to those weaver engines. And that's probably the smallest uh, engine that I have. Uh, someone asked if I could show you the end scale. Well, the only end scale I really have is up here next to Hannah Montana. <laughs> yeah. It's from when I was a kid. Um, you can see it up there on the shelf above those MPC, those MPC engines right there. Favorite engine after the Hudson? Huh. Oh, geez, I don't know. I have to think about that. It would probably be, I would probably be the big boy. I think that engine, I was so excited when I got that engine a couple of years ago. So that would probably be the one. All right, I'm going to move us back over to where we started. Any Marks locomotives? I actually have a couple of old Marks engines, and my dad has a Marks from when he was a kid that I'll have to snag and we can run sometime. I don't even know if the Marks engines that I have will run. Liam the Werewolf. All right, sorry, here we are. We're going to, I'm going to go under the bridge again. So... You can see some trains passing over. Actually, let's look at this. It's kind of cool. What would, what would be a good name for a town? I don't know. That's kind of something that could be kind of personal, right? You pick out, pick out what you uh, what you like to see. All right, two toot on the seven sixty five. We will do that in just a moment. We're going to go back over here. Oh my gosh, Robert Campbell. Robert Campbell, $100. Thank you so much for that super chat. Robert Campbell, good friend of mine. Got a chance to hang out at York last year, which was really special. Gave me the super cool Katie box car that I brought home. Sorry, here we go. Put you back on the tripod here, folks. Wireless mic still working, still coming in. Hopefully everybody's still here. And we are at, let's do a time check. Because I'll just keep on going. Can I run all my Southern Crescent locomotives in a video? That would be fun. Okay, we got the MPC and the scale. That would be only, I think I have the, the diesels and I have the, the far set. Going back to my chat on my computer here. All right, we are at 10, 12. We're gonna go for a couple of more minutes. I will blow the whistles that I have not blown because that is something we need to do. Uh, real quick, if you missed my earlier announcement, for those of you who are still here or those of you who joined later, we have some exciting news on the channel, or exciting news in the industry. I am actually having a custom run engine being made. I'm really excited about it. So if you have a chance, go to trainworld.com and if you type in RBP, you will see uh, what's coming out. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a really neat, neat engine. I'm really excited about how it came out. We're going to do the official launch on it next week. Sid, thank you for posting that again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this Burke, who happens to be right by me. Just 
get the sound up on it. So that was the 765. Now I'm hearing the F7. All right, the F7 will be next, which is way out there. I'll go out. I will travel to the F7 and we'll get the whistle going, the horn going on that one. All right, I'm going to make my way over to the war bonnets. I think it would be a lot of fun just to do a video with just the, the whistles and the horns. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? I think that'd be great. All right, so we are at about an hour and 45 minutes, so we've been at it for a while, folks. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna wrap things up. I just wanna say thank you to everybody who joined the stream with me tonight, who took the time to hang out. I know it was kind of a funky start. Here's the Katie here coming around for the end. But thanks for all the questions. Thanks for all the support. I'm going to have a new video coming out next week at some point. And definitely feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. You can find me there at RBP Trains. Uh, just message me there. I also have an email, which is rbptrains at gmail.com. So if you want to reach out to me there, um, I'm always checking that email. I'll try to get back to you as, as quick as I can on that. And as always... A huge thank you to all of my subscribers and everyone who's been supporting this channel. My name is Chris, and I hope you all have a great night. We'll see you next time.